The first cycle I want to talk about is perhaps the easiest one, and it's the one you've probably been hearing about all the way since, you know, elementary school, the water cycle. Now, the water cycle can start anywhere you want, for example, with transpiration or evaporation or sublimation. These are the three processes by which water goes from the ground to the atmosphere, you know? Sublimation is when water goes straight from the solid state to the, to the gaseous state. It happens when like ice goes, it, it goes straight to gas. You may watch it like in the snow and see that it, like, there's some fog coming off the snow, it goes straight to gas. That's sublimation. Uh, evaporation is when water from the surface, it just basically absorbs the energy of the sun and also it goes to, to, to the atmosphere in the form of gas. And there's also transpiration, also called evapotranspiration. That, and that's when a living things, for example, the leaves of plants or the skin of animals, they wet their surface so that when the sunlight hits that and causes that water to evaporate, the, or when the heat of your own body heats up that water, the water will take the heat with it and that way cool the, the organism down. If you wet your surface, the heat of your body will be transferred to the water and then the water will leave and that will carry the heat with it. So it's a way that living things keep their temperature down. And so it's also going to be a way for adding water to the atmosphere. So that's transpiration. Now between the three of them, you're going to be adding water to the atmosphere. Now, once in the atmosphere, the water will rise and eventually you will lose heat to space and it will cool down. When that happens, it will become liquid again in the form of clouds. This process is called condensation. When the clouds get very heavy, they will fall down as precipitation. And there's lots of kinds of precipitation. You have like uh, sleet, you have uh, hail, you have uh, ice storms, you have snow, uh, you have rain, you have drizzle, you have glaze ice, dew. Lots of different ways by which water exits the atmosphere and goes back into the ground. And all of those ways are called precipitation. Now, once the water hits the ground, it, a lot of things will happen. Some of the water will run on the surface. It's called surface runoff and end up in rivers or streams. And sometimes they end up in lakes. Sometimes they end up in the oceans. Now, other parts of the water will actually infiltrate or seep into the ground and be far what we call groundwater discharge or groundwater systems. And then eventually that water from lakes, from rivers, all ends up in the oceans, which then restart the water cycle process and there you go. That's the water cycle. It's easy enough to understand. Now remember that when water goes from liquid or, or solid towards the gas, it's absorbing energy. And then when it goes from that gas to liquid, it's because it lost energy. The energy got lost to space, so now it, it became liquid. And when it falls again, it gets frozen, and, and again, it's losing energy. So the water cycle has a lot to do with energy transfers as well. But definitely very important for life because life will pick up water as it's coming through the surface runoff or from the groundwater table and use that water to survive because as much as 70 to 90 percent of the, of the life is made up of water so very important cycle for life and if, of course it also affects life because weather affects life right so definitely an important uh, cycle to know about